And welcome to today's now streaming show coming to you live from ACNA TV. I am Promise Njoku Adibe, and um, I'm not alone to anchor this segment. I have with me always smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, viewers. You're welcome to now streaming. Good morning, Promise. Good morning, and that's Rachel Ibunu, by the way. And then um, we have a guest for today in the person of Dr. Sunday or Latunde. He is, uh, let me make sure I get that correctly. He is the clinical pharmacist and a fellow of West African Postgraduate College. College of Pharmacists. Good morning, Dr. Sunday. Good morning. It's good to have you come talk to us today again. Thank you very much. I good remember morning, the last time you came. Doctors. Remember the last oh, time you came, we, we had that discussion on drug abuse. Yes, you know, we're, yes. we're still going to do part two of it. No problem. Okay. I'm always available. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Well, viewers, remember to be a part of this conversation. You can call in using the number on your screen or you can send us your contributions via our social media handles also showing on your screen. The mosquito may be small quite small but its impact is immense hugely immense malaria is not just a health issue but a matter of economic development and human dignity but the big question is is it possible to have a world flu of malaria today can we create a healthier more equitable world for all well the answers to those questions are a capital y e Yes, yes. And that can only be achieved if we work together. We all can be free from malaria. Viewers will be looking at the theme for this year's World Malaria Day, which will be celebrated tomorrow, 25th of April, 2025. I'm still in the studio with my co-anchor Rachel and our guest, Dr. Sunday Olatunde, who is a clinical pharmacist. Okay, so... He's going to be doing real justice to this topic, and I'm going to be delving quite very fast. Now, we've seen ma what malaria they've been celebrated. Now, the yes. big question is, what is this thing called malaria? Because um, the moment you go to the hospital, malaria, malaria. So what exactly is this big sickness called malaria? How is it being contracted? And then if it's such a big sickness, why is it being celebrated? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's three in yeah. one. <laughs> I, I like that question. Why is it being Why celebrated? Is it being celebrated? <laughs> okay, thank you, Promise. And thank you, Rachel, for having me thank again in the coming. studio. Uh, to answer your question, let me come from the, the background of what malaria is. Okay. Uh, it's one of the infectious diseases. And when I say infectious diseases, they are diseases that can be contracted or transmitted mm. from one person to, to another person. So it's one mm. of the infectious diseases that is caused by what we call malaria parasite, Plasmodium falciparum. That's uh, English may be too, too kind it's of It's actually big, too big. But <laughs> Please let's break say it down. It is caused by malaria parasite. This okay. Plasmodium falciparum, it is found in the sub-Sahara Africa. Uh, sub sahara or let me say temperate regions regions that have their you know average environmental temperature a little higher than 20 degrees celsius mm. that can support the reproduction of plasmodia organisms so this organism uh, you know happen in our environment and it can be taken into the digestive system of a mosquito and uh, when mosquito, especially the female and novelist mosquito, mm. this mosquito need blood milk to produce egg for reproduction. That blood milk can be the blood of animal or the blood of a human being. Mm. In the search for blood milk, mosquito bite human being. And in the course of oh. biting, mm. they can push 
the malaria parasites in their digestive mm -hmm. system into, into the, the blood body. stream of a person. Uh -huh. Okay, by the time that happens, the temperature in the body of mosquito is not as high as that of human being. Okay. Therefore, it cannot support the reproduction of plasmodia. Okay. The way we understand that yes, now. Yes. Now, because it cannot support, so the malaria parasite cannot grow essentially in the, in body, the body of mosquito. Oh. But when it bites a human being, the human being in his blood has a lot of blood uh, food nutrients. It has oxygen in the blood of a human being. Then the temperature of the body of a human being is about 37 degrees Celsius, which supports the reproductive stage of plasmodia organism. Mm -hmm. So that means that through that, the human being contracts this particular organism called plasmodium or plasmodia mm -hmm. organisms. So when that happens... It takes a, a lot of process <laughs> yes. before it so gets When there. that happens, the individual has got the infection. Mm -hmm. But the infection may not have... Uh, translated to a disease condition okay. that's what we call an inoculation you have been beaten you have got the parasite the parasite will need to develop and grow usually oh, it first finds its way into the liver of an individual wow. when it gets into the liver it grows to a certain extent when it gets to a certain level of population that it has multiplied itself mm. it spills into the blood when it gets into the blood it finds its way into the red blood cells and when it grows to some extent it bursts the red blood cell so before then, when it gets into the blood, that's when you start having symptoms like chills. The person starts shivering, mm -hmm. having yeah, temperature yeah, and having joint aches and the rest yeah, of yeah. all of that. Those are symptoms that the patient will see and say, let me go for testing. And I see that, oh, you yeah, have malaria. malaria. Malaria is in your blood. That is what malaria is. Because this one has come with a lot of economic implication. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know that when... Uh, uh, you have endemic disease states that's a situation where you have a disease condition that ravage a population of people you cannot dissociate it from the economy of that particular state mm -hmm. what happens is that people that are not healthy cannot drive a healthy economy true. At all. so if that is true it then means that malaria has become a discussion in itself eh? on a kind of burning uh, on the boner for us to discuss because if you leave malaria it's going to cripple any economy so that is malaria for you and the implication on the economy so in 20, 2007 the world health assembly which is a kind of a like who mm. the world health assembly recognized the effect of malaria on our economy and on the life of individual now say let's try to have a day set apart where we can draw more awareness about the danger of malaria, mm. how to prevent it, and, and how to control it or eradicate it completely. That's why that day in 2007 was agreed on that we'll be commemorating the World Malaria Day on April 25th of every, every year. year. And the first World Malaria Day was commemorated uh, in 2008. Are we getting that? Yes. So that is the background with malaria the commemoration mm. now let's look at uh, the theme of this year's commemoration mm -hmm. the theme is that accelerating fights against malaria yeah. for more equitable world for more equitable world accelerating fight against malaria for more equitable world this particular theme uh is uh, chosen in order for us to bring malaria onto the table of a political discourse so that we can use that to mobilize more resources for malaria prevention and control hmm. and to engage the community, enhancing and empowering the community with requisite education and knowledge for malaria prevention and control. Thank you. Okay, now th th that's really awesome. That's really awesome. But then in all you have said, this big thing yes. called malaria yes. despite the fact that mosquitoes like i said it's very tiny very very very, very tiny yes. okay so yes. um you you talked about you know the economy development and all that malaria really tramples on that mm. of course it's a healthy uh, people that can lead a healthy yeah, economy, uh, economy. Yes. so i want to now ask in nigeria do we ever see our economy being very healthy with malaria on ground it's because the people are not healthy like i said you cannot drive a healthy economy with an unhealthy people
healthy people are the ones that can drive healthy economy. Yeah, but uh, you see, many times when we, they roll out, uh, you know, uh, development uh, indices, you will hear of uh, educational human resource uh, uh, or human capital development. Mm -hmm. You will see uh, health indices such as maternal mortality, yeah. such as uh, uh, infant mortality, mm -hmm. and the rest of all of that. Of course, you know that the maternal mortality we have in Nigeria and the infant mortality we have in Nigeria, the leading cause of those indices is malaria. But then, is it just um, uh, mainly pregnant women and infants that this malaria attack? Why doesn't it attack you men? Okay. Why is he always attacking we the females? I, I, what okay. happened to us? Why, why is it so? Okay, thank you very much. That's a very germane question. It's not only uh, children. It's not only pregnant infants, women. Uh, pregnant women, and vulnerable groups. Let me okay. quickly say, malaria affects mostly the vulnerable groups. And who are in this bracket of vulnerable groups? We'll be talking of uh, pregnant women. We'll talk of... Uh, Infant. children below five years and infants will be talking of displaced persons that's internally displaced mm. persons you'll be talking of uh, yeah you know migrants people who are migrating through uh, uncontrolled routes like uh, those who are using road transport to europe okay those are vulnerable groups then those who are displaced by war or natural disasters or humanitarian emergencies those are vulnerable group because at every point in time that a person does not have one requisite education and the person is poor that kind of person is vulnerable but together with that is that those who are displaced from their natural homes for example if you live here this is probably your natural home but if there's a conflict around here and you are in the IDP in the evening today people in the IDP some of them don't even have a home not to talk of uh, uh, are you net that's netting of windows to and doors. mosquitoes and not to talk of going to buy uh, insecticide treated mosquito net to prevent malaria. not to talk of sleeping well resting well to boost immunity in order for you to stand against malaria parasite infection are we getting all of yeah. that so we we'll talk of displaced people you we'll talk of people who are victims of natural disasters you talk of children. Infants have not developed immunity sufficient okay. enough for them to stand against the uh, invasion of, uh, you know, malaria parasites. Children under five are so susceptible. And the infant mortality we talk about is in this age group. Okay. Then when you take a look at the uh, pregnant uh, mothers, uh, you will understand that uh, their immunity is usually suppressed as a result of pregnancy. And because of that, when malaria and when mosquito bites and uh, malaria parasite is introduced into their system, they do not have a fighting stamina in order yeah, to stand to against, against it. it. And the devastation consequence, devastating consequences became pronounced. You now see a situation where either the mother dies or uh, a situation where there is still birth or a situation where there's premature delivery or yeah. a situation where uh, you have a low birth weight. Have you heard of a low birth weight mm, before? Yeah, yeah. When you give birth to a child, a child, underweight. maybe ordinary uh, underweight mm -hmm. child, when at the point of delivery, that shows that something did not develop very well. Mm. Either the internal organs, liver, kidney, brain, and oh. all that. As a result of malaria, prolonged malaria, that the mother may yeah. have uh, contracted during pregnancy. This okay. is why, Rachel, I leave <laughs> to you now. <laughs> like, this is scary. Very, very, way. very, yes. very. Like, you talked of the, the vulnerable people that are uh, uh, prone to this malaria. We talked of the underage from five years, the pregnant women and stuff like that. Now, and considering the theme of uh, this year's um, uh, celebration. Yes. These people really see anything to prevent them from contacting this malaria how to prevent themselves from contacting them 
especially those in the IDP camp. We hear of, okay, they, they share, uh, the government share um, nets uh, to prevent such, such. Well, how far have they gone and how can this be prevented? We see uh, uh, slums, those that sleep around, in the, yeah. around in the slums and our women, our mothers, they barely have this uh, facilities to take care of themselves to prevent this. Thing. How can this, how can we, Okay, talking about the government, I don't know. We talk about the government, government coming to. How can we, as a person, help ourselves first before the government come in? Okay, to this? thank you very much. Also, uh, together with that, I would like us to take the issue of, uh, you know, gender, human rights, and equity. What mm. are we talking about when we talk of equity? Uh, here, we are not talking of justice. We are talking of uh, equitable distribution of, uh, you know, resources. Justice that are mobilized, usually mobilized for prevention and for the control of malaria. So let's first center on equity. Uh, the two most important uh, arsenal, the most important weapon that you need to prevent and to control malaria spread and transmission is education okay. and resources. Okay. So where you have prevailing illiteracy and prevailing poverty, the people there or the victim of such two will be vulnerable to malaria parasites, uh, you know, infection. Mm. And the devastating effect of it, they will be vulnerable to it. And how does that come? You and I are in Abuja. Mm. And by the grace of God, you are educated. And by the grace of God, you work either for government or for pri a private, private entity. Either way, if you work for government, you have been employed by government uh, of Nigeria. If you work for private, you are partly employed by your employer and by government. Why do I say so? The, the private entity thrives on the amenities that the government okay. provides. Okay. One way or the other. If there is no security, the, go and the private entity will not thrive. Mm. If there is no road, if there is no infrastructure, the private entity will not thrive. Mm. Therefore, your job is partly by your employer and by government. So we now see that we see ourselves as a privileged people. But there are a group of people in this same country. Mm. One are not privileged to be educated. Yeah. What's the impact of education and what we are discussing? Uh, this I'm discussing, we are using English as a medium of our expression. Mm. And for as many as those who can listen to us from wherever they are all over the world can understand what we are talking yeah. about. But we have a group of people who cannot understand this. Mm -hmm. Probably because of the medium of expression we have chosen, which is English language. But there are still people that even when you go to their community and you are able to translate English to their mother tongue, they will still not be able to understand what it is because of the logic it involves. Look at my first uh, uh, introduction about how malaria comes, mm. how it is transmitted, mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, Even if I says. explain that in Yoruba to a Yoruba person, mm. logic is required. Ability to get information, process it, and make sense of it is required to understand that. And if a person cannot understand what it is, how can the person take action to prevent it? That's where education okay. comes into it. Now, when we now talk of poverty, education and poverty, they are Siamic twins. Mm. They are together if you can you can say somebody is poor because it's not educated you can as well say somebody is not educated because he's, he's poor, poor. Mm. so the two of them they are difficult when a person is educated to a certain extent you don't have to be a professor a basic education is what we are talking about mm. primary to secondary school if such a person has got a qualitative secondary school education if i want to explain what malaria is I will be able to explain it and the person will understand. be able to understand me. Now, prior basic education enhances or gives opportunity for someone to be to have self-awareness and self-introspection. Be able to evaluate yourself and know what you can do within your own capacity mm -hmm. to make yourself better yeah. in terms of whether finances or whatever. To be able to assess implication of a certain thing a certain concept that is explained to you for example malaria if you have malaria often and your family is ravaged with malaria mm. the implication of it somebody that is self-aware will be able to assess yeah, yeah. that 
and we'll be able to take requisite action yeah. to prevent that. But if the person cannot be so self-aware and cannot evaluate all of that, then the person will be a victim of what we are talking about. Okay. When somebody has basic education, the individual can uh, be employable or trainable for a vocation that the person may want to go into. Mm. Trainable or employable. If a person does not have that level of education, the person is already, you know, bracketed out of this discussion. And by that, when you talk of uh, malaria, he doesn't know. When you talk of prevention, he cannot even appreciate what you call prevention. Mm -hmm. So we talk about education and poverty. And people that are out of that bracket, that cannot access education and are poor, they are more vulnerable than those who have yeah. some level of uh, uh, education and are not so poor. And you know, I started with yourself and I, that we are here in Abuja, and we have derived some benefit through the intervention of the government mm -hmm. of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Will you say that opportunity is equitable since it is not available to everybody? Mm -hmm. And those that the thing is not available to, they are vulnerable to the ravaging effect of this particular phenomenon, malaria we are discussing. So where is where equity comes into it? And I say equity is not law. Mm. It's not that say, okay, what you give Abuja, you must give you them in Abaji. Mm -mm. Is about what does Abaji need that will make them to prevent malaria, malaria and what does Abuja need? In the case of Abuja, we may need just little because an average person is developed to the extent that he can weather some certain level of resistance against ravaging effects of malaria on his own. For okay. example, you as a person, one, you have a little understanding of what malaria, malaria is. is, two, you can afford to go and get education about prevention mm. and implement recommendations that can lead to prevention on your own mm. without calling on federal government because of what education that and lack have. of poverty that we have here but for those ones here in the same country where we all have equal right to the resources of the country mm. you see that some people are mm. uh uh what they are they don't even have access they are denied yes. they don't have access and that's where we talk of a equitable distribution of resources but the case of gender you know there are some gender practices in nigeria in which uh a gay child is discrim discriminated against where i grew up from you may find out that uh, a certain father who has uh, two children a gay child and a boy child when he has resource or resources to train only one that's the best of his capacity he chooses to, to the boy. train uh, the boy yeah and when he trains the boy he gives the boy education hmm. by that empowers the boy, boy. <laughs> against the the girl child and yeah. when we talk about malaria prevention and uh, malaria eradication and control what do we two things we mentioned we mentioned education, education. And, education and, poverty. and poverty the education that the gay child does not have made that to be poor, poor. and then vulnerable to so, malaria, malaria. Oh and when goodness. you go to some part of uh, northern nigeria you find a situation where a gay child is given a marriage too early yes, yes. age 13 14 15 and such a gay child is not educated not and by that subjected mm -hmm. and banished to poverty mm -hmm. and when that happens it makes her more also vulnerable more to malaria. malaria ravaging effect and all that. I, I think we, we, we wouldn't have time to exhaust all of this, honestly, okay. because um, this is really eye-opening. Mm -hmm. But then, I remember a question I asked you the last time you came here. We're, we're not talking of malaria, then yes. we're talking about um, war on drugs. And I asked you, why, why, is, it, why is it that in in Nigeria, malaria, malaria is just everywhere. You go to the hospital, there's no time you go to the hospital and your blood is tested that they will not, not tell you you have malaria. malaria. In fact, from the videos we watched, so people kept saying, you know, malaria, it's malaria. It's a recurring so, thing. Yeah, it's like a recurring every month thing. You, you have... Every time you go to the hospital, in fact, you finish taking malaria treatment right now, go to the hospital in the next two weeks and they test your blood. There's still malaria the there. It, yeah. That is one. Why is it so? Is it that the mosquito bites keep or is it that the medication we're taking mm -hmm. is not up to standard? why is why do we have a daily reoccurrence and then um, um the second question i'm going to ask is it that the government cannot bring out like a vaccine for every nigerian to take and then we know that okay for the next 10 years i've taken this vaccine just like we have for hepatitis mm. i've taken this vaccine so for the next 10 years i'm free I'm of malaria sure. can't the government do that 
Okay, yes. like, can we get the response briefly? Yes, I've just been you. told that. Uh, the possible. government can do that, and the government is working on that. There That's for the to, vaccine. Yes, for the okay. vaccines, okay. and it's likely going to be for children uh, oh. five years and below to start with because they are the most vulnerable Listen, it's, not, <laughs> it's, not, it's not about you it's about who are the most vulnerable group among who do we have most debt okay what do you want to prevent okay want to prevent debt she? yes so it is among those group that we have most debt and mm. we must start from those ones they are the ones that have little immunity Okay. So yeah, we must start from there. So that's the answer to for the, the vaccine. Uh, for the okay. vaccine. The second one is uh, why do we always have malaria even after in treating? Our, even after treating. Okay. The thing is this: uh, since you are not controlling the uh, mosquito bites, you may be treating, and the mosquito is still but biting. It's right. you. Oh my God! You may finish treating tomorrow. Another mosquito so has biting. bitten you. Together with that is that many of the medicines, eh? What they do is that they convert the the my, uh, the organism that's plasmodia uh, organism that is responsible for malaria now to what they can call uh, hibernating organism uh, a kind of uh, static we call it back uh, 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 you know a kind of uh, you give medicine medicine converts the organism to uh, in a form that can no longer cause disease okay expecting the body's immunity to to flush eradicate it, it to, okay. uh, to flush it out in situations like that when you go the test will always will identify that it is there but whether it's able to cause disease is another thing i don't know if you get what i mean yes i do so that's why you always have that positive 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 sometimes you see it is one plus but you know that you are fine mm. there's nothing i am not okay. feeling any symptoms but it's there it is there because this a uh, microscope has identified that is there sometimes the medicine you took has only converted to an inactive yes that's the right word an inactive form of the plasma so should we should we be living on anti-malaria for the rest, for of, the our rest of our lives that's, just to to prevent that's why you said, people keep telling us um, excess of these drugs damages our our liver our kidneys okay. we're, we're, Rachel, we're in between we don't it, even know where it, to it's head it's not to. as bad as that at any point in time when you need to use medicine you will benefit and risk Oh. For now, for now, mosquito is right with us. To stop malaria is to stop mosquito. If you can stop mosquito, mm. it will be good for us. We'll be able to stop malaria. But I if you cannot stop mosquito, stop malaria is this here with us. Been. The way we can go about it is that vaccination. Mm, and yeah. we are starting with the children. Please, so how, how soon we, are we starting? Well, some uh, countries around us have been uh, actually... Uh, signing papers and all that for them to roll it out. The Federal Ministry of Health will do that in due time. So when that happens, the body will go down. It does not mean that malaria will no longer exist, but mm. we will be able to have some level of uh, immunity against it from the level of the children, while the adults will cope with the medicine till they roll out vaccination for the adults in shortest possible time. That is uh, about malaria. <laughs> okay, we, we run, we've run out of time. Yeah. Just your last word to some okay it all. yes thank you very much it's a great opportunity for me to have uh, this discussion i would like to be talking to be advising the general public and the government at this point uh for the general public i would like us to take advantage of uh, education mm. i would like us to take advantage of education education in two ways education by trying to let your world or your children have some basic education because through basic education you now understand other things in life mm. i've practiced to a certain extent where i need to teach somebody high blood pressure and the patient could the person could not understand what it is oh, wow. and i change language to the language of the person he still cannot understand the logic hmm. so that's yeah, education the second education is enlightenment as we are doing now we are enlightening the public, public. about malaria take advantage of this enlightenment opportunity and take recommendations recommendation will be that one take adequate rest adequate sleep and natural food such as grains vegetables and fruit to make you have a stamina immunity okay. that can okay. resist malaria system. that's okay. number one number two is that take other measures such as proper netting of the house hmm. it is malaria season again 
we don't want to have casualty about uh, uh, 608,000 deaths was recorded in 2022 alone. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to have so much many casualty. Take proper netting of the house, the entrances of the house and the windows. Put nets. Then, if possible, get insecticide treated mosquito nets and sleep under it. Okay. Clear the bush around the house. Prevent you know water being collected that stagnant water mm. around your house mm. don't have particles and uh, bottles that collect water it is rainy season it is malaria season okay uh, my, uh, sorry before i go okay uh, mosquito breeds where there's moisture where there's water and that's why we have more malaria during rainy during season rainy, okay. so the public should take that for the government malaria treatment prevention and control uh, is a fundamental human right mm. according to 1999 constitution, constitution as amended because we have right to life then we also have right to dignity of human person and under dignity of human person we have right to education and right to health care so malaria should be treated as a fundamental free human of charge. right free for of charge. nigerians according mm. to what the constitution has said so that's my advice to the government thank you very much sir please i love that part malaria should be treated free of charge in all government hospitals please <laughs> okay is it, is it happy, is it happy? <laughs> i don't know especially like, the part I'm, I'm like, even I'm, where he said where we, we shouldn't store water <laughs> i don't store water but then imagine those who don't have boreholes in their place they go to fetch water and they have to store gosh. so i don't know how it's happening well then rachel time is uh fast spent let's let me get your last words before yeah, we start i've learned a lot from from like it's a whole lot mm. from what the doctor has just trying to explain to us today and i'm i'm sure our, our viewers out there have learned a lot too and we put it into practice and use and we hope for a free uh, malaria society <laughs> thank you very much rachel thank you very much uh, dr sunday for coming to talk to us we know you are fully loaded you've not even <laughs> scratched the surface but then time is not on our side thank you very much i will definitely call you again for more uh, exposition on all these health topics thank and you i very much i, I want me. thank you sir yeah. I, I want to thank um those behind the scene i have mr godsend mr peter um miss shewa mr shei and miss Mer thank you very much for keeping it up and then um, everything we've been doing here is courtesy of them so i want to also thank our viewers out there for allowing us grace your screen but uh, before i go i just want to tell you like he said let us join forces to create a world where no child dies from a mosquito bite and no family suffers from this preventable disease yes malaria is preventable together we can create a world where malaria is a distant memory not a daily reality so like i said earlier thank you for your time let's do this again tomorrow morning same time but until then remember to subscribe and follow us on all our social media platforms we have very educative inspiring and interesting programs for you and your family have a wonderful day. Bye.